So in this video, we'll just do some exercises on the concept of linear combination and the spanning set related to the vector space we talk about. And um, these two concepts were explained already in the last two videos. And please look at the current example now. So please look at the current problem. I'm giving you a vector w and I give you another three vectors. I would like to ask you whether the current given vector w is a linear combination of the three vectors v1 to v3. And it means basically I'm asking you whether there exist solutions c1, c2, c3 for the constant such that uh, such a vector equation holds. And please note that uh, the current space we talk about, this space is actually two-dimensional, right? So um, in that case, usually you just have to pick two vectors. And uh, whenever possible, the two vectors should span the whole space. And please look at the current problem, you see? If you look at the last vector v3, this one is actually lying on the same line generated by the first vector v1. Why? Because this vector is actually minus 2 times v1, right? So it means what? It means basically, if you look at the xy plane, and let's say now the strict line here is generated by the v1, which is one, two here. And basically V3 is really on the same line. Um, so although the both coordinates are negative, but uh, they are on the same line anyway. So it means um, you're not getting anything out of this direction of the line, right? So um, it means what? It means as a two dimensional space, if you try to pick two useful vectors, we usually need to pick two vectors that are of different directions. I think V1 and V2 are fine. Because V1 and V2, they are of different directions. So um, let's say I pick V1 and V2. So why am I doing that? Because the fact is like this. If you are able to write W as something like um, the linear combination of these two vectors, then we can easily set three C3 to be zero, right? So in that case, we'll get the linear combinations by including the last vector also, because we can just trivially set this one to be zero. So it doesn't matter at all, the last vector. So I'm saying that we just need to pick two vectors which are useful in the sense that they are of different directions like these two. And in case we can find two solutions, then it's good enough. We don't care about the extra vector. We actually have more vectors than the dimension of the space. And let's look at this problem by the use of determinant now. So you see, you'll get a vector equation like this if W is the linear combination of the first two vectors we pick. And such a vector equation automatically gives us a linear system because we can just make the x coordinate and the y coordinate equals the x and y coordinates of W respectively, right? So you see, this system is basically two by two. And based on our understanding on the determinant, as long as the determinant here is non-zero, we understand this system must have exactly one solution. So I think this case is easy to find, right? And obviously, the determinant is non-zero. It means uh, assist the um, solutions for D1, D2. And it's actually unique because uh, we know that's the property of non-zero determinant for the coefficient matrix for our current um, equation like this. Right, and um, because of the fact that W is the linear combination of the first two vectors, and obviously uh, we understand that W can be written as the linear combination of uh, all three vectors. We just have to make it zero, not a big deal. So the answer to our current problem is actually yes. And let's look at more example. So please look at the current problem. Uh, it is somehow in the opposite sense to the last example in the sense that I'm giving you a vector space, which is actually three dimensional, but I give you the number of vector, which is less than the total dimension of the space. And here, uh, we have no shortcut. We just have to write the equation here. And let's hope that we're able to find such a In that case, if we're able to find that, we understand that the answer is yes to the current problem, right? And um, let's try to do it together. So as we expected, there should be a linear system generated by using the vector equation here by making the left and the right side equal for the x-coordinate. 
for the x coordinate on the right hand side of course you have to add these two up so that's why you have the left hand side here the first equation is for the x coordinate the second one is for the y the last one is for the z coordinate right? this system actually has uh, three equations but only two unknowns and usually in such cases you have to be extremely careful for example you can pick the first two equation and solve it first so for the first two equations something like that and I think this one is so good because we know the answer already c2 is 2 and we can replace it to the first equation so c1 plus 2 times 2 this one is c2 equals 3 which means c1 is actually 3 minus 4 which is minus 1 right so uh, it looks like we solved the solution c1 c2 already but it's not yet done because we actually have one extra constraint this is the third equation. You have to replace the solutions you have for C1, C2 into the last equation. As long as the last equation is also satisfied, then we know C1, C2 are the solutions. So I have to put these two now uh, to the last equation here. So uh, let's say the left hand side is going to be something like that, right? So uh, the left hand side is actually 2 minus 6, which is minus 4 now. But you see this minus 4, obviously, is not the same as 1 on the right hand side, right? So it means um, our solution is actually not compatible with the system. It's not compatible in the sense that our system now uh, has no solution. It basically means that uh, the final conclusion to this problem is that the answer is no. Our vector is not a linear combination of the given two vectors. So you see, um, that's the answer to this problem. And next, so let's look at problem about spanning set. I actually now give you three vectors in the xy plane, and I'm asking you whether the three vectors span the whole space, basically. And so once again, the dimension of the space matters. Like this case, this one is two dimensional, right? And two dimensional space means what? Two dimensional space means you need at least two vectors to span the space two vectors of different directions actually so let me put a note here so you can see my note um it means because this space is two-dimensional we need at least two vectors to span the space on the other way it basically means if i give you only one vector definitely it doesn't span the whole space right now i'll give you three vectors it doesn't automatically imply it must span the whole space. Uh, the fact is that we try to pick two out of the three vectors that are of different directions. If you look at V2 and V3, I hope you can see that V3 is actually two times V2. These two are actually um, on the same direction on the XY plane because V3 is a multiple of the vector v2 and uh, so it means when you pick two out of the three vectors you cannot pick v2 and v3 it makes no sense we try our best to pick vectors that are of different directions so now we can instead choose the first two vector v1 and v2 and how to do it and um you see if uh, these two vectors actually span the whole space we don't have to look at the third vector right so let me put it here you see even if uh, you add one more vector into the span of v1 v2 it really doesn't change anything because this vector itself is sitting in the space right so um as long as we know this fact is correct we must be able to write the v3 down as a linear combination of the two vectors here so you see when v3 is a linear combination of the two vectors here it means adding v3 to the spanning set doesn't really add any more information to us right that's why these two spanning sets are equal and um, now uh, can you show that the spanning set of the first two vectors must be the same as the whole space so you see uh, please look at what i've written down um, in in that case uh, it basically means for any vector x y it can be written as the linear combination of the two vectors right and for any such vector equation it is equivalent to a linear system by using the x coordinate, you see, you can make the x coordinate equal. You get the first equation. The second equation is obtained by using the y coordinate, right? And um, anyway, uh, it comes down to a linear system. And as long as the determinant of the coefficient matrix is non-zero, which is true in this case, where this one is actually a non-zero determinant case, we understand such a system is always solvable with exactly one solution, C1, C2. And that's the current case here due to the fact that the determinant is actually non-zero for the coefficient matrix. So it automatically implies this solution actually exists all the time. It's unique. It's not only exists. And um, it basically means 
uh, back to this equation. This equation is always satisfied for certain C1, C2. No matter which value x, y I give you, it doesn't matter. So uh, it means that uh, these two vectors actually span the space, right? So you see, because we have this fact, and automatically now we understand that even if I add a third vector inside, it still spans the whole space. It doesn't change anything because the third vector, due to this fact, uh, is itself a linear combination of V1 and V2. And let's look at one more example. Please look at the current example now. I'm giving you a three-dimensional space, X, Y, Z space. Uh, but I only give you two vectors. I'm asking you the spanning set of these two particular these two vectors, does it span the whole space? And I think the answer is obviously no. Why? Because um, this one is actually a three-dimensional space. And as I've noted in the previous video, it needs at least three vectors to span the whole space. Basically, three vectors, they should point all to the different directions. In that case, we expect that it, it may span the whole space. Unfortunately, now, we have only two vectors, right? So you see two vectors definitely are not enough for us to span the whole space. And that's the end of this video.